Hey guys, the new patch dropped a few days ago, and I've been stalking win rates every day to pick up the best champions. We're also going to have two best in role, uh, two kind of A tier runner ups, and one to watch. But let me know what you think. Timestamps and a list of the champions are down below. I'm sure somebody will copy paste that into a comment for some likes. But let's jump into AD carries first. I actually think AD is a really important role, unlike earlier in the season where we we're basically useless. Like the damage share for us is up a ton with tanks in the jungle and supports buffing us. So Tristana is going to be number one, climbing up to a 30% play rate. Right now so far in 717 and banned in 15 percent of games for an ad carry it's very easy to do your damage properly you press q you auto attack maybe press your e if you want to and you're basically set you're also very safe you have this amazing late game decent early meaning you can actually snowball earlier and you get your late game items sooner into the game which is pretty scary you've got a really good kit for team fighting and that is kind of what the game has turned into a lot recently actually like this meta is all about how well you can fight we have a good set of items and we can can really carry games with Triss, especially if they go later. Twitch is going to be a close second, I think. Honestly, he could be first. Uh, you can be more proactive, but Tristana is just easier. He has more damage for sure, but nowhere near as safe and a weaker lane phase, in my opinion. Tristana has like really good single target DPS, right? With Twitch though, his AoE damage is brutal. He can hit more than one person with his ultimate and with runins, which means in team fights he can in theory do a lot more work. Overall, we've kind of got more of a pick where you sit back and you kind of farm, wait for fights, I guess, like that kind of playstyle. You're very strong though, and your roaming can 100% win a game if you get a few kills. For our A tier, we have Jin to start with. Definitely, he's taken a tumble recently, but with the Draven nerfs, I think he actually pops back up here into this tier. Now, he doesn't have the best time against tanks, right? But not everybody plays tanks at the moment. Even when they do, he can crap on his lane and try and move into a solid mid game. Jin doesn't 100% fit the sensor and tank meta, but if you will play Thresh or Blitzcrank with him or whatever, if more aggressive support, you can get a lot of work done early and you can snowball really well. Vayne is kind of the opposite to Jin though. She legit wants this sensor tank meta and is so good in it. Doran Shield start is a bit pussy, but it helps her survive with Warlords. You've then got this really good mid game and 1v1 potential. Your tumble makes it really hard to focus you in fights with yourself and stuff. And your damage output is insane. You can even burst a lot harder than almost all other ADs with your tumble shiv crits. My one to watch though is Jinx, who's underrated definitely. Just like Tristana, even easier, but not as safe to play. At lower ranks, I definitely think Jinx fits this meta of like late game hyper carries. And she's doing pretty well so far in 717. So in my opinion, the jungle is really important as well. They are normally our engage and ganks can like snowball these late game carries into their builds earlier, which is brutal to play against. So like instead of like S and A tier though, we're going to have tanks and carries. So Sejuani is our number one tank because she has so much crowd control. So tanky and ganks like a machine. I honestly think I get camped harder by Sejuani than like a Lee Sin or a Lee, honestly right now. And she turns that gold she gets into being unkillable tank. And normally in a tank meta, it's just about like how long can you survive, right? It's not really about that anymore. It's about how much of a pain in the arse you can be. And Sejuani fits that perfectly. She's got a really good early game for a tank. Plus in a massive front line with loads of crowd control and engage and stuff. She can carry games even as a tank. That is a really big thing. Cho'Gath is the same kind of story really. Not just a huge tank, but actually carries the game himself. Stoneplay with his nom is the most broken thing I've ever seen on Cho'Gath. Like even if you don't one shot the enemy AD, you probably will. But if you don't, you basically take them out of the fight anyway. You don't gank as hard as Sedge, which is why you're number two, but you farm really well, you have insane team fights. It's kind of your ability to kill things better than carry junglers while still building full tank and lasting forever that makes you one of the most irritating tanks to play against. If we move on to our carry junglers, Jarvan is the best one for me, in my opinion. You're able to gank really well and do a lot of damage, even into mid game as well. Personally, I actually like him because you can do everything on Jarvan. You can play tanky with like Knight's Vow and Locket if you really need to. You can also just go Warrior and Cleaver though and legit one shot the enemy AD and actually carry yourself. Yourself. Having that kind of flexibility game to game means you can pick him all the time and you're always going to do well. Shivana has kept on climbing in 717 though. Didn't really expect her to be this good. It's weird to think of her as like a carry jungler, but she's top five for sure. She does a silly amount of damage right now. She bursts pretty hard even with her bite reset thingy and she kind of gets tanky. It's really the farming aspect though. She gets so much gold and we aren't used to junglers having so many items and being such a threat, I guess. My one to watch out for is going to be Nocturne, who's another carry pick that I really like. Going lethality or more like bruiser build, either is really good. You're able to gank really well after level 6. You do a lot of damage. You're amazing though at dueling other junglers and finding them and I think he's actually pretty underrated. Mid lane didn't get any changes this patch and I actually think there are loads of really good picks. Twisted Fate though is going to be the Rome God and my number 1. You can be a really good player in the lane phase or you can suck and it really doesn't matter. Like you're going to use your ult either way. I say this a lot recently but you do not need to force any more on Twisted Fate. Your mid game is really 
good. Team fighting is solid as well. So you can just kind of wait it out and do some work later into the game. Obviously, your roams are really good, but like having really good burst damage and a low cooldown stun is amazing to play with. He also kind of sets their AD carry back 1300 gold because they have to buy QSS or they're going to die. So you can carry by roaming or carry later. It doesn't really matter. Nazahar is still going to be number two for me. Guy is just way too easy to be good with. He's a lot like Tristana, actually. Malzahar used to be okay, like kind of balanced, because if you didn't set up your W and E before ulting, it didn't really do that much. Now it has a lot of base damage, so you can legit just get away with pressing your R. Like it's perfect to gank for as well, so you end up getting ahead normally. Your silence is so annoying to play against, and it does so much damage. Overall, I think he's just too easy to win with, basically. Good lane, shoves it in, but like team fights are so good. In our A tier, we could obviously have the typical Cassidy, Ari, Oriana, Syndra, but we're going to take two others. Talon is a lot better in 717. He has decent matchups. He can push. He can roam and really open up a game. I actually think Talon has more kill pressure than a lot of people realize. That crit when you're up close can catch so many people off guard. And if you get a lead, the whole map is going to feel it. That is the thing. You're such a good solo queue champion. Like you have a strong lane and then you roam. You win other lanes and you snowball the game that way. You're even decent behind though if you one pop someone. And if it is like the most underrated kind of known about, but kind of just ignored a mid laner right now, who is actually better this patch? She's pretty hard to play against as an AD carry. If you're in range to auto attack, you're kind of in range to get popped really, which is good when they count for a lot of the damage sharing games now. Another one like that is my one to watch who is Diana, especially at low rank. She's kind of like a safer version of Akali. To be fair, they either suck or do really well. It doesn't seem like there's much of a middle ground, but she's really good. Better so far this patch and does a silly amount of damage. Top lane can be actually really important in games at the moment. We're back to carry picks more and they're also really good at shutting down the AD carrying fight. So if they get fed, it can be a real issue. No one is much better at that than Riven. You flash in, you combo, and most of the time somebody dies before they even get out of the stun. I think there are two main things. So number one, she can get ahead in the lane phase, and once she does that, she tends to steamroll, get even more damage, and come into fights this massive issue. Number two though, if that doesn't happen, she can still be a major factor in fights with her damage. A good Riven is hardly ever useless because they just stack damage items. She's pretty good against tanks. Death Dance is like the most annoying item to play against on a bruiser, and she has a massive impact in the game. Number two is Jarvan. He is one of the only champions who can beat a Riven because he's stronger in the lane phase and gets relatively tanky. This is the main thing though, actually. You're going to have some good damage. You should be able to kill people in fights, but you don't have to build full damage to do it. If you get ahead, you can dive in and you can one-shot people, but if you get behind, you can stone plate and engage to help your team. You have this chance to get ahead and win your lane, like kind of show your skill level, I guess, but it's not all or nothing. Like you still have the backup for being a great team pick in this meta. With our A tier, we have Maokai. He's probably the best pure tank top at the moment. He gets really beefy and even if he loses lane, it legit does not matter at all. For one, he can stack armor against carry laners, which is really useful. And sometimes he's even going to win the lane, but it's more about the roaming after. Jungle Maokai is high enough to kill anyway, right? But top lane has more gold, which means he has more items, more defense, and it's even worse. Gangplank is really good this patch if you can play him. He can get a free lane depending on the matchup, I guess, if it's like a tank is free. But either way, he's like the best late game pick for top lane. If you get ahead, then you get these late game items faster and you're really going to kick it into gear mid game. If not, you kind of hold on and you solo carry later. One barrel plus like center ultimate is enough to one shot carry. The reason I love that so much is because even if you have a monkey team, you can still carry the game yourself. My one to watch out for hasn't really changed. I know I mentioned Singed a fair amount, but he is legit insane so far this patch. Kind of dumps on carry picks, is annoying to play against and can engage like a beast. This whole new grounding thing really helps him out honestly. It makes getting away from him so much harder. He's kind of like a Ramus now, but with more damage. So finally for support, Janet is still number one, even after the sensor nerfs. It didn't really seem to do anything. And you know why? Everyone had a hard on about these nerfs, but when you rush sensor in the lane phase, when you're like, okay, I can't fight anymore because they got their sensor when they're super strong, it's basically exactly the same as it was before. It just doesn't scale into late game as much anymore. So by that point, the AD carry has their items anyway, and they don't need sensor as much. Janet is still the same busted champion she was last patch. She has an 80% ban rate in Korea at the moment, and that basically sums it up, to be honest. Thresh is still probably the best go-to sensor shutdown champion, so that is why he's number two. You bring Ignite to the lane, you hook after hook after hook, but you've got to do it before they get the sensor, or it becomes a lot harder. The good thing is, unlike a Blitzcrank or something, you have the backup of your kit being good for peeling as well, so it's not all over. You're a really good early punish support, but also good mid-game still. Hooks can really snowball a game and actually carry. For our A tier, we have Rakan Firsty. is an amazing amazing pick right now. He's a sensor support who can actually fight and be a playmaker at the same time. He's kind of the middle ground. He might not be like the pure ego that Janna is, not quite as good at protecting, I guess, but he 
makes up for that with his offensive side. In lane, you're actually very strong if you play it correctly. I think he'll become a lot better though as people learn him more. Soraka is going to be the other ego support, I think. Her heal can perma keep sensor active on the AD carry, which is pretty disgusting. Her silence can have way more impact than you probably realize in a fight. Her ultimate applies sensor to everybody. She's actually really good. Plus, we have the added benefit of no matter how bad your AD carry is, it's almost impossible to die next to a Soraka in the lane. My one to watch is going to be Leona, who had a big spike up after the buffs here. So maybe she will rise as like the all or nothing anti-sensor champion. Her buffs definitely helped her team fighting a late game. Maybe not for high elo, I guess, but lower down for climbing. She can be really good to get ahead. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you like having more picks in here or I guess like less, but more detail. If you found it useful though, feel free to give it a like. But for now, I'll leave you with the robots.